Hey guys, I just want to say um, thank you for hanging in there and showing your guys love and support um, over the channel. Um, I'm making this short video announcement to let you know that um, I'll be slowing down producing videos and content. Um, be really focused on advancing my career, fishing my college, and really focus on the Lord. The whole purpose is of reason why I created this channel. It's really was just to make a effective way to preach the gospel when I go out and share my faith about the Lord with the lost. I just refer to this channel. It was original intent. Um, I'm very well pleased how far the Lord has taken me and the views I was able to produce was you know take the step of faith and do the all the you know producing and editing all by myself but that being said even though I am slowing down on making videos for a channel for now I might come back to it Lord willing perhaps one day I'll do a face reveal and maybe do some more live recording sessions. We'll see what the Lord has in store for the future. But meanwhile, um, I do appreciate you guys' love and support in your prayers and also to keep sharing the videos and liking them. It definitely helps bless um, this ministry and get the gospel out there with the lost. And I encourage you, for anyone who's watching this video, or listening to this to just take a step of faith and just produce some content that God is leading to do that you know because you're another voice out there to preach the true gospel and the more voices we have out there of people who are who is doctrinally sound who has the true gospel of grace we need them out in the world so that's you which you would just pray and I encourage you to go out there and share your faith with others while there's still time before Jesus returns and have no fear God is for us and if God is for us who can be against us so thanks again family may y'all have great blessings from the Lord coming your way may the Lord give you peace and that is it. I'll, now let's get to onto the video. Thank you and God bless. The title of today's message is Why do people reject free grace theology? So, without further ado, let's open in prayer and let's get into what the Word of God says concerning this subject matter. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for the grace you've given me um, to get your Word heard from for YouTube and other online platforms. God, I ask will you bless the listeners and your word does say that it will never return void. So Lord, I just pray that over your word to be sent today, that it will be sent what it was accomplished to do. And I pray if anyone who's not saved and they don't know they're going to heaven, well, let them they know today. I ask this, Lord, that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, let's get right into the scripture. Now, the reason why, there's multiple reasons why people, mainly unbelievers, people who are not saved, who hate free grace theology, is because they hate the fact that God, God's grace is free. <clears throat> Stated in Romans 11, 6, and if it by grace, then it's no more of works. All right. Grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is no more of grace. Otherwise, work 
is no more work. So, based on the word of God, grace that we're going to save, either by God's grace or by our works, but it cannot be both. So which one is it? Are we saved by grace or works? Well, the passage we just read, if it's by God's grace, then no work is required. Period. Sweet and simple. Romans 4, 5. But unto him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So you, the moment you believe in Christ, we're count as right with God. We're justified. It just means just as we never sin or done wrong, because we trust in the finished work of what Christ did on the cross. And that's all that's required, just belief in Christ that saves you. Okay, another reason why unbelievers, they hate the fact that salvation is in fact a gift, and because it's a gift, that means they can't work for it. Otherwise it won't be a gift. Romans 4, 2 and 3. For Abraham were justified by works, he had their, thereof to glory, but not before God. What said the scripture? Abraham believed God and was counted unto him for righteousness. You see, if we are just by works, we'll get the glory. God won't get the glory. Because God gets glory. Our works does not play an aim part at all, not even for a nanosecond when it comes to salvation. And of course, many people are so stuck, those who are unsaved or lost, they even call themselves Christians, in fact they're false converts, for a simple fact that they refuse to believe what God's word says by trusting Jesus, and they want to trust in themselves. Matthew 7, 22-23, May will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? In thy name, cast out devils, in thy name, done many wonderful works. And then I will profess to them, I never knew you, apart from me, ye that work iniquity, or you that work evil. See, these are people who even confess Jesus is Lord. So this scripture also shows us that we're not saved by confession, but by believing. And notice that they focus on their works. They never talk about what Christ did for them. And unfortunately, there's going to be many people who call themselves Christians to find out that they're not saved because they refuse to look over the works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace, you are saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. No works, these any man should boast. So clearly, we're not saved by works. It's purely just by believing on Jesus that we are saved. Now, another thing why unbelievers um, hate free grace theology because they want to be right and they want God to be wrong pursuing, pertaining to salvation. Proverbs 21, 2 and 4 reads, For every man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A high look and a brow heart and the plow of the wicked is sin. See the the fact of the matter is why people hate free grace theology, which is, if you don't know, race, it's actually biblical Christianity. It's because they hate the fact that God did the work, and they hate the fact that God will get the glory. People cannot stand that. They want to brag and boast on Judgment Day and tell Lord, look what I did. But that's the very thing that won't save you, because it's not about you. Second Corinthians 11.20 for you suffer if a man bring into you in bondage. If a, man, if a man devour you, if he a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. And the crazy thing is there's many false prophets, false teachers out there, and false Christians, false converts. They want to hold on keeping God's law and commandments. They want to take away the joy you have in Christ and put you back to bondage so you can become a slave unto God's law in which that can't justify and can never bring you peace. The purpose of God's law is only to condemn. And of course, unbeliever or anybody who rejects God's word is a result of being proud. 
Romans 1 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all righteous of men. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So what happens when people who reject God's word become retrobates and they actually take the truth of God's word and they suppress it in unrighteousness or evil deeds rather than just simply just believe what God said and what Jesus said pertains to salvation they want to turn about themselves and they want to do evil works evil deeds also another thing is unbelievers they hate true Christians because they hate the Jesus the real Jesus in the Bible John 15, 18. If the world hate you, know that it hate me before it hated you. John 7, 7. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because it testifies of it, that the works thereof are evil. You see, three grace theology is the minority in Christianity. It is the most hated theology. Therefore, logic follows that it must be true biblical Christianity, because Jesus said, you be hated for his name's sake. So, understand this, people are not hating the theology, they're hating Jesus directly. They're actually hating God and His Word. On another thing, unbelievers can't stand the fact Jesus taught whoever trusts in Him has everlasting life. This is what it means by one save always saves. It means you're forever safe. And people hate that the fact that Jesus says this, and people hate the fact this is actually in the Bible. Because they can't boast about themselves. Let's get into it. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, meaning should never die, but have everlasting life. That means life goes on forever. That means you're forever saved. Period. John 11.25 Jesus said her, I am the resurrection and the life. He believed in me, Though he were dead, yet shall live. And got a couple more verses on this topic. And there's many more. I mean, you can scratch the service. John 10, 28. And I give them, this is Jesus, eternal life. They shall never perish. And neither shall men pluck them out of my hand. So you see, you can't get ripped away from me at God's hand. That includes yourself. You can't jump out of God's hand. The Bible doesn't teach that, so that's a stupid, wicked, man-made, false doctrine. But once you're saved, you're always in God's hands. And also, John 6, 37, All the Father has given me shall come to me, and him I, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. So you can't leave God's hand, and Jesus said he's not going to leave you and cast you out. Guess what? You're in it for the long haul forever it doesn't matter what you do after you believe on Jesus because you're forever safe John 5 24 very very I say unto you he that hears my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come to condemnation but is passed from death to life there you go Jesus didn't spell for you condemnation means you're condemned to hell he said if you believe in him you never and I repeat will never ever ever see hell period if you trust in him now also unbelievers false teachers false brethren false comforts false prophets you get idea what they do is they keep twisting bible verses taking out of context so they can stay being condemned and keep unbelievers condemned or in other words preventing them from being saved in the first place in fact they produce false comforts that makes them that much harder to win and share gospel to. Just like the Pharisees that Jesus had dealt with. Second Peter 3.16 That's also in all his epistles, speaking of them of the Essenes, where are some things hard to understand, which those who are unlearned, unstable, rest, as they do in other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Galatians 1, 8 and 9 But if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, than which we have preached to you, let him be cursed. As we said before, and now I say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then you receive, let him be cursed. So you are cursed by God if you teach a false gospel. 
It didn't say you're blessed. It said you're cursed. Keep that in mind. Make sure you have the right gospel. And make sure you're safe. Romans 1, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in knowledge, he came over to retrograde mind to these to those which things are not convenient. And of course, I talked about earlier, because they rejected God, they come into a retrobit mind and they stay being deceived. Now the thing about false believers, fake Christians, false brethren, they love to boast about keeping God's law, which, by the way, no one has ever kept, including them, and like to teach others to do likewise. For you break just one God's law, you're guilty of breaking them every single one of them. James 2.10, for who shall keep the whole law? He has found one point, he is guilty of all. And you can't be saved by keeping God's law anyways. That's not a point of salvation. Romans 3.20, therefore by deeds of law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is knowledge of sin. The purpose of God's law is to point you where you have fallen short of God's glory. Where you sin. So you can put your faith in Jesus the Savior. That's it. When you're talking about salvation. You don't keep God's law and you don't work. To be saved. You trust in Christ. Obviously after you're saved. We should walk in obedience to God's word. But it's not required to be saved. And to get saved. Galatians 3.10 For as many who are works of the law are under a curse. For his curse is everyone that continues on all things which are written in the book of law to them. It's funny that you hear a lot of Christians out there, they'll say, you know, stop your sinning, don't sin, keep God's law. And here the Bible says, those people who attempt God's law are under a curse. And they're not blessed. It's interesting. In Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by works of law. For by works of law shall no flesh be justified. Hopefully you get a point. Faith in Christ. That's it. That's all the Bible teaches to get saved. Pretty simple. And this is the, and it's that simple fact that main people won't get saved. Because how simple it is. Now, obviously, this includes turning away from sin that may worship salvationists or any works-based gospel, false gospel that people teach. Turning from sin is indeed keeping God's law, which is a work which condemns you. John 3.10, and God saw their works, talking about people in Nineveh, that they turned from their evil way. So that's an action. Evil way means it's turned from the sins. And God repented the evil that he said you do unto them. And he did not. Honestly, it says God repented. God's not a sinner. So he doesn't need to turn from sin. Repentance, this means a change of mind. In the New Testament. Metanoia. That's it. Change your mind from unbelief to belief in Christ for salvation. That's it. And by the way, your best religious effort or deeds, it's a filthy rag. In God's sight. Uh, so yeah, six, four, six. But we are all as unclean things, all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. We do feed the leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. So God is not pleased with you boasting about yourself, how good you think you are, um, for your religious deeds, or trying to be a good person, or etc. God's not pleased with that, and won't get you to heaven. It will send you straight to hell faster than you blink your eye. What God wants you to do is trust in Christ. He wants you to be humble, admit that you're a sinner, you deserve hell, and you need a savior, which is Jesus Christ, and trust in him. And the moment you do that, you're going to heaven. Matthew 23, 13. <clears throat> but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You neither go in there yourselves, neither suffer from them, that are entering in. And of course, there are still, like the Pharisees back in the day, the, the law keepers for salvation. They're, very, they're alive and well today. And not only they don't go to heaven, but they prevent other people from going there themselves. And they will have to face 
greater judgment and God's wrath because of it. Pray it is not you, my friend. Don't be deceived. Get into the Bible and get saved. If you haven't seen it already, um, in the beginning of the video, there's a gospel presentation. I'll put it at the end of the video. And if you need more, there's a link in the description. How to be how to be 100 sure that you're going to heaven. A verse by verse study. And friend, I consider if you're not saved, get saved today, because today could be your last day. All right, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Until next time. God bless.